Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on quantum statistics. This is video number 25 and I'm going to answer why the number of states in n space is equal to the volume in n space. I'd also like to point out that I now have a website universityphysicstutorials.com. So just to do a quick recap, we are, we're trying to analyze, uh, in general in quantum, quantum physics, we're trying to analyze the behavior of a particle or particles. So in order to do this you need the function form uh, of the particle or what it's doing. So we need its wave function. The simplest way to analyze a situation is to model the particle as being inside a potential well, infinite potential well, where the potential is zero inside and infinity outside. Alright? So this is the very that's the, the starting point. And I did this and I found that the wave function is e to the i k dot r. But we found that the wave function cannot take any value that it likes. It is restricted by the fact that k must be equal to twice pi over a times n, where a is the width of our of our well in one dimension, or it could be in three dimensions as well, and n is an integer. In other words, our n is a positive number, positive integer. So now we found that n restricts n is the principal quantum number which defines what the energy is, what the momentum is, everything is. Okay? So we found n to be a very useful parameter. Now, because this principal quantum number defines everything about your, your particle and its possible, um, possible, possible state, it leads us to examine what happens if we plot all the possible values of n. Okay? And that should be n sub z. Because you cannot have, well actually I'll talk about that in a moment, but because it's an integer, all the possible points in n space are separated by, you know, 1. Because they're separated by 1, you can't, for example, have n sub x can never be equal to 1.3 or 2.7 or whatever. Or n, neither can n sub y and neither can n sub z. That means that k cannot have the corresponding value and the energy cannot be, um, the energy cannot be that which has a, a quantum number, you know, that isn't an integer. Alright, so it's restricted. It's restricted like that. Now, how, how do we find out how many possible states can your system have? Well, the way we do this is by noting the fact that there is a unit distance between each of the states in, uh, in n-space. There is a unit distance. Okay, so how do we find out how many states are in n-space? Well, note this. If I just make a unit, a, a unit volume, which is a cube, so let me just extend this up here. There's a dot. There's a state. Join those states. There's another state. Okay, there's a unit cell. Now let me blow up this unit cell so it's bigger. Okay, so you're going to have to maybe a do a bit of art. So, I'm just going to blow this up. That means that we have eight possible states, or eight states touch of this particular unit cell. But the important thing here is, and you might have seen this if you've done chemistry, geology, or solid state physics in the past, that this unit cell shares each of its states, or its dots, or whatever you want to call it, with other unit cells. So let's say this is one here. So let's say these four dots here. Well, they're shared between the green one and the black the, the, and, the, and the black cell. Which means that each of them only has half each dot. Half of it is in one and half of it is in the other. But let's just extend let's just extend on. I'm sure you can see where we're going with this. So we tack on another cell. Now we have this dot here, for example, is being shared between three cells. So there's a third of that dot in each of the cells. And finally, let's just extend on here. So we're going to create, I'm sure you understand what's going on, we're creating four cells. So this particular dot is being shared by four different cells. So there's a quarter of that dot in each cell. Now, the thing is, we can also build upwards. Because there are more, that dot is actually being shared, or that state is actually being shared by more unit cells. So bear with me, and I build these continuous lines. I think that's it. Join them all together, like that. Okay, 
and we see that there are another four cells on top. So that means that this particular state here is being shared by eight unit cells. So each dot is, there's actually, for each dot that there is, only an eighth of that dot is in any unit cell. But in each unit cell there are eight dots, so that means the total number of the contribution of the eight dot, the eighth by eight dots is one. So if you have a unit volume, well then there is only actually the equivalent of one state in a unit volume. So if you want to know how many states you have, you just calculate the volume in n space and that equals the number of states. Okay? So remember that g sub s is the number of states. So we said it's, it, the number of states is the volume in n space, well that's just dn sub x, dn sub y, and dn sub z. Okay, that's the volume, very straightforward. But we saw that if we scaled into, um, into other spaces, we'll say into k space, we would have had dk sub x, dk sub y, dk sub z. We have this scaling factor, which I'm just going to call alpha, and this, whereas the scaling factor here is 1. Okay, so the point is that the difference, the volume or the number of states in, say, k-space is not just the volume. It's the volume in k-space multiplied by this particular scaling factor. So it's, it's different. Okay, so I think that's all I want to say about that. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and you might also um, click on uh, go visit universityphysicstutorials.com. Thank you.